uh, and what you find in fact in, in the gardens of Andalusia and the different uh, buildings around it are um, writings from the Quran and poetry. Uh, for me it was a question of just going to place and that sense of place and to speculate, to meditate, to reflect. Uh, I'm just going to uh, you know, introduce you to that part of uh, Spain. And uh, what happens is that for this, it was also during the period of the uh, beginning of the first Gulf War, 1991. And uh, this project carried on through the 90s for me. Um, there's also a discovery into that culture called El Andalus. I quote from Pietro Morena in the book called The Nazarene Garden. It's exceptional sight on a hillside of the Feral del Sol, facing the Alhambra, and dominating a vast landscape where one could follow the sun from sunrise beyond the crests of the Sierra Nevada to its sunset below the horizon of the plain, largely contributed to making this site the ideal place to enjoy the beauty of nature, and there allowed the creation of the Nazarite paradise. Maria Rosa Menachel has written in Al Andalus and 1492, The Ways of Remembering. In one stroke, the Western lyrical tradition at its origins and during the formative stages of the modern period is revealed as multicultural and multireligious, as Jewish and Muslim, as well as Christian, as Andalusi. So it was during this period that, uh, relatively speaking, uh, under, under Moorish rule, under Arabic rule, um, cultures flir all cultures flourished. Uh, uh, people of all faiths live together. It's a remarkable period, and part of this book has been an exploration of that as well as other things. And so, that was part of what's been going on in these gardens in Andalusia and El Andalus, and this too, for me. Clean hands, elbows fill air, I chafe the resonance of difference. A heightened skin breaks into scars. The tincture of right, brown, is not so belonging, but parcel. Wrapped things tied are abstract, and correction of color and Arab, distant, remote speech. A moon or many as held beneath fingernails. The dirt is most fine, delicate margin of human, toil in the garden, white, pure, the best. The garden's war is so much with us. The crumbled ruins of, they say, a chemical research plant. President Bush, General Schwarzkopf. The garden is fine in the mist of early morning. Sad, sad sack. The pillaging of Mesopotamia is next to visit monochrome vacation colony. I have a lot of quotes from different sources and part of the project is to again explore to the various worlds that I'm introduced to in the learning process. And such from uh, quoting from Maggie O'Kane in the Guardian Weekly in a story called uh, Victims of a War They Never Saw. If it is not a child without a brain, then maybe it's one with a giant head, stumpy arms like those of a thalidomide victim, two fingers instead of five, a heart with missing valves, missing ears. In Iraq, the health authorities say that at least three times more children are being born with congenital deformities than before the, before the Gulf War, now in both Britain and the United States. Veterans of that same war are coming forward with reports of sick and dying children. From Granada, the Alhambra, and the Henrilifa Gardens, to Seville, and the Alcaza, and its gardens. The attentions put this, a walk, a plan, a wander from patio to next, haunted only by the smells current in air, the single song of a bird, each death of friends, a patio, the path laid, the hibiscus bush ready to bloom, cusp, cup, up, from this pool, three white trumpet blooms anchor us here to the bench, foot seeking relief, comes to leave the path. More than anything other, we leave you this corner, this waiting bench by a pedestal table, a vine marking its growth. More than any other thing, a place to sit down. Leave these words behind you. 
to leave leaf leaves left to leaf lift deft a theft a thief thrift a drift leaf All about these grass grounds and sandy paths, the piles of rake leaves and debris, the sounds of motors cutting away, the laughter between those at rest from toil, rakes left leaning, empty pails on the way. March, a month, an approach to spring, the preparations of war cut away old wounds. As the foot enters again, here straight from these eyes, in the distance, the backs of others leaving the path. The world we might love into which we pass through some gate. A garden, the worn azul and yellow tiles, the assured passage so needed, then broken. Enter through a gate under a stand of palms, the world we might love, a gate always open. Just before I uh, read uh, an excerpt from a short story, um, having lunch with uh, Professor Hutchinson and uh, other members of the faculty, we were talking about food and talking about Japan. And so I thought um, I'll read a couple of uh, a cu a cu uh, this little section called Real Sushi. And of course, Unlike the 1950s and 60s, that I don't have to explain what sushi is anymore. But this is kind of a definition of what it really is. Um, the real sushi is parts one and two, called sashimi, raw fish, tomaki, which are the real ones. Boy, a lot of people go to bars Fridays after work. Night, eh? Myself, give me a bar where knives tingle like broken plate glass. And the refrigeration units, huh, they're clean at the bar. Not, mind you, wrists of cool blood with a sharp incision across the clean Toro's stomach, but still you hear old death chiming at your door. Now this is where you'd expect I'd introduce the raw fish, but I won't. Olé! Olé! Eat wisely, eat fresh, the rice beneath old death, and old death wrapped neatly tightly like a thumb with black nori seaweed, a touch, a touch moistened to secure which doesn't fall apart at the, the faded, the moment of contact. Hot and cold breeze, whiff with the fan. This holds the seasons, salmon run to sea, fat in the perch of your hand. Nigiri, which are the little rice balls. Good. Mm. A niggling complaint, so quick this life. Oh. A hold with pressure exact, squeeze grains of rice, living bright customers on stools, await briefly this universe. You'll see on the menu something called chirashi, and basically it means scattered rice, that is bits of fish and egg and things, uh, and vegetables over the, a box of rice, chirashi. story from this book, Lake and Other Stories, Lake. And there is the sound of metal, the lid of a green tackle box, with its lures, hooks, and small lead weights, its filament test line snapping shut. A threatening hook which is caught, hanging over rim outside a jammed closure. It could, this barb, catch on a false sweater, a rust-colored pullover. It is early October, the weekend before Thanksgiving, the weekend of fall foliage tours, leaves of scarlet, yellow, and rust. Good weather for fishing, last of the season. They sit facing each other at rest, 
propped upon each other's quiet as he rose the aluminum skiff outwards with the instinctive steadying keel of push and pull. This, even though he is now over seventy, this effortless focus of intelligent strength built through his past, those days in his twenties, a fisherman in northern BC, when he'd maneuver his sailboat, the sailboat first, before he had finally saved enough to purchase the Kanawan gas boat through the high seas beyond the Skeena River. The, boat, uh, the story is set in a rowboat uh, with uh, this Japanese-Canadian man and his uh, grown-up daughter, Sue. Uh, that's, and they are in the rowboat. And then the, the, the story takes place up in cottage country in Ontario. Uh, along with Sue is her younger brother, Kevin. It's the three of them. And at this point, um, Sue is talking about the death of, uh, of uh, her mother, um, their mother. And she was not there when, she was, when his, her mother was stricken. He pulls hard and evenly. The bull feels like nothing beneath her. He nods one set of words. It is all the sky clear above them, the deep lake. It is clear too, opening beyond and behind. It was Easter that year, an Easter which will remain with her now, a phone booth on a quiet Paris street. It was not far from the Pantheon. But I thought I was there at the ticket agent. I was, her voice wandering. And so, when they told me I had to book 21 days in advance for, it seemed okay. God, you know. She dips her left hand to trail in the water as the skiff keeps pushing. Her hand a resistance, which cuts a V-stream spreading into the green-black mirror, which is loosened and steady, where there can be no probe, no penetration of clear light. He is silent at the stern. He looks up to the rocky point of pinkish and gray granite, sun angling off irregular points. The driftwood which in the lake, of, lake looks like antlers, like bones sculptured with twisted wire in the shallows. The fireweed, too, stiff in the filtered light. The bones, skeletal, which look as they drift closer, like driftwood, only driftwood. She points a finger without speaking. Halfway up the steep perpendicular rock face, likely a tamarack or spruce nestled on a jut, like a bird. And also a perched gray bird, or is it a rock, gray? And still closer, the twisted wire in the shallows, the fiery too, stiff in the filtered light, the bones, skeletal, which look as they drift closer, like driftwood, only driftwood, the place bad for snags. And just above her notice, like a figure standing, is a tree. It is a young tree, but already in its place. It has that sense of the inevitable, the natural world, that here is the one place for its solitary stand, to grow here and here only. She sits silently for some time, and now they've moved into the cottage. She watches him, her father. He sits on the grey tweed chair with its pink wool crochet throw. He is looking through the screen porch to the moon-twinned lake. Two white discs as sensuous as glass marbles, the best ones clinking barely in a soft purple cloth bag in which came the thick bottle of Crown Royal whiskey. He thinks of when he first saw her, his wife, Hannah, when they were coming out of Strathcona Public School in Powell River. The school upon the hillside overlooking the harbor. This year would be 49 years past, almost 50. Almost 50 years, Sue, you know? Yeah. When you think of it, he says, thinking out loud. And behind them, the breeze as it snaps shut a screen door of another cottage, perhaps 50 meters away. Two youngish couples from near Peterborough. It is a gentle wind, this thrush thrush through the poplars, the white birches, the feathery white pines. Winds light tonight, down to a low of eight, trails through the ear from a radio, while through the wood carries the thrush, 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 twigs and leaves falling, blowing onto the broken pat, bracken pads. Across Sue's face he catches a draft of striped moonlight, a fish dives with its current comet of color, a millisecond wire of suspense. Splash! The dark silver coin surfaces in a pool. There is silence, possibly lasting a few seconds, perhaps many minutes. Splash.